Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Capping TV. Welcome to the PGI OCE Qualifier Lobby number three. We are currently we're currently just about to go live in sixty seconds with lobby number three. I have a little fuzzy seal here with me. Welcome to the stream, mm -hmm. mate. Hello. Feeling pretty good. Well, decent as as much as we could feel after a. Uh some of the hiccups that we've had, but I think that we're finally about to get in this game soon, man. Yeah, I've just got the uh, the official word from the ref. We're going live in, in 45 seconds. Um, other lobbies are having some issues, but it looks like our lobby is good to go. I'm just going to run us through the teams now. We've got in position three, we've got Atletico coming out in position four. We've got SYF Gaming, then five, Arcane. Six has Jam Gaming. Seven has Jonas Pizza. Eight has New Genesis. Nine with Existo Gaming. 10 with Ministry. 11 with Big Yikes. Then we've got Team Immunity coming in at position 12. RLC at 13. No Shit Gamers at 14. 15 will be holding Beauty in a Triangle. 16 with What Appear. 17 will have Outside Esports. 18 will have Intergalactic Lags. 19 will have Veterans in Pajamas. 20 with Grim Gaming. 21 with Dude Where's My AWM. And 22 rounding it out with Team Morton. Mm -hmm. So these are going to be 20 team lobbies. Uh, Comp PUBG lately has been using 16, but this is going to be a little bit different if these guys haven't been scrimming this lately. This is pretty interesting. Uh, also, are, are, are we in game yet on stream? Uh, on stream, no. We currently, I think the lobby has just popped, but we will we will cut to the game once that plane starts. Oh, well, it's it's going to be a, a surprise plane when they do get in. I'm not going to spoil it, but it's going to be something pretty fun. So I, I know a couple of these teams. I, I know about Atletico, for example. I know that they're one of the strongest teams in the scene right now, but are, are there other teams, other teams that we should be looking at right now? Uh, we should definitely be watching the Jam Squad. Uh, they've been doing some pretty uh, decent Yep, performances. Squad 6. Yep, Squad 6 at Jam. We've also got the uh, one of the titans of esports in Australia, Team Immunity, with their squad, who are definitely no one to be messed with. They've got, uh, especially hmm. with Nutshot and... Uh, actually, I haven't got their squad here, but I know definitely uh, they're, they're, they're captured by Nutshot, and he's an old hand at PUBG. He's one of the original streamers and one of the original players, one of the first esports players of PUBG in Australia, and still, still very dangerous in the game. And I, I would not be surprised if they definitely come in, come in the top three in this match. Yeah, I, I'm, I definitely feel you for the for Atletico and uh, squad Nutshot. I guess we'll call him for now. Uh, 10 seconds before the lobby, if the plane starts, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm, definitely. I'm, feeling, I'm feeling all right about this. Uh, do you know what the loot settings are for this? I'm pretty sure it's a default, isn't it? I think it's all default, uh, as far as I know, for ESL. It could have uh, some different circles, but that would be it. Uh, maybe red zone's turned off. Uh, we're just going to now roll in game. The plane is about to start. <laughs> yes, it is. And do you see this path right now, sir? Um, one second. We're just having an issue. There we go. Right. I am. Yes, I do. Okay, we're currently sitting <laughs> over the plane. Um, yeah, um, we've got teams dropping straight away. I've got the map open. So we've got Aussie Bob and his squad dropping straight really early. Actually, three or four teams dropping really early. This path dropping straight across. Just above Mill there. Straight through on that passage. It's going to have a very tight... This, this is going to be a very tight game. This particular route is going to be really, really horrible for anyone to find loot. Already we're seeing two teams uh, we see on the southwest side dropping around Primorsk. Inside looking like they're going pretty deep, but the rest of them is kind of wondering whether or not they actually want to go for this. We're, uh, but east of Primorsk, there's a, that big uh, open field there with a couple of compounds. No one dropping there, which is pretty curious. In fact, the west side in general, besides those three squads that dropped that western coast, no one else actually going for that. So there's going to be some contestion for cars, but besides that, it's going to be pretty chill. Definitely, yeah. You can see we've got this massive wall here on the west side. Just got shots already, I can hear. Um, but we've got this massive wall on the west side, still dropping very slow. Everyone pulling their shoots early and really trying to get spread out north there to, to where they can get some loot. Because like you said, this is a very compressed team. Only one team dropping mill though. Yeah, a lot of times teams just won't drop here because they think it's just too hot. But when one team can actually drop and get it on their own, they're going to be feeling really good about loot. That's going to be Squad 20. The guys in Grim Gaming, they'll be claiming that for themselves. The circle also has popped at this point. And a lot of these teams that drop in the middle, maybe that Pachinki or that Farm area, are going to be feeling pretty good. And one of the teams that we were talking about before, uh, Nutshot Squad number 12, the guys on Team Muty, they're one of the guys that are center circle right now. So if they can get a little bit lucky and find some loot and find a combo to hold up, they're going to be feeling pretty pretty good yeah that's, that's for sure so we've got nutshot here in the middle he's just outside of pachinki then we've got squad 19 as well sitting in pachinki on their own they're going to get some decent loot there because they haven't had the first blood of this game 
Uh, or at least first down of the game. It was a, it was a friendly fire vehicle kill there. Pretty yeah. nervous. Or not, not a vehicle kill, but a vehicle down. Hopefully they'll be, get, be able to get that player up. The middle of the map, though, is a little bit contested. As you said, Pachinki is being claimed by Squad 19. Veterans in pajamas. But to the southeast of that, there is the Squad 17 as well. The guys on Outsider Esports. They're getting themselves a couple other a couple compounds as well. But with these reduced loot spawns, it's not really going to be enough loot, I feel. I have noticed that I am have split up. So you got the three boys have gone up to school, but then a nutshot is on his own here. I'm assuming he's got a vehicle which he knows about to, to catch up with the rest of his team. He's getting some decent loot. He's got an M4 and just picked up the MP5 as well. Hmm. He's got uh, two bandages and a health Ooh. kit. And it doesn't look like he's got uh, any armor yet. So that's interesting, but I'm looking at Lepovka right now on the far east side because we have two guys from squad six. Uh, oh, I yes. love spaghetti as. And, but, but but there's already a full squad coming in via boats on the eastern side, and they're just now getting their loot. They are very, very late, but Luke Ultra or Isle of Spaghetti not in position to actually prevent these guys from getting kitted, but squad 16, the boys in pink, they got to get some guns early. Definitely, yeah. So I'm just going to pull out here for the viewers of the stream. You can see right there, so as we can see, we've got that full squad who have come from the beach. So I don't think squad 6 have realized, although they are bot. One, the, one of the cars is leaving right now. With uh, yes. Luke Ultra being the, the solo from Squad 6 staying in Lepovka right now. Mm -hmm. He's actually running for a buggy yeah. right now. He needs to get this before he's caught out. At this point, Squad 16, the guys on what a what a pair, have had more than enough time to get kitted, and he will be grabbing this buggy, getting right at a dodge. I don't think anyone's really in position to contest this. Rusky is the closest one, but nah, no way. That's going to be the guys in Squad 6, Jam Gaming, get, grabbing a little bit of loot out of Lepovka, then bouncing, keeping all four players alive. Alright, so I've just got Squad 8 sitting at prison, Squad 10 are a bit split up there over the east side, just between uh, the wood camp and then the uh, other part of the wood camp, the other side of the hill there. Squad 3 very spread out as well with Linksy, that is uh, Atletico actually, Linksy sitting right down mm -hmm. at that area below the beach, then you've got one at Milter Power and one in between, Mil two in between Milter Power for Squad 3. Not short still yeah, that Milta, there as well. Very that Milter Power split. For, uh, for Atletico has been a very, very strong drop ever since FaZe popular popularized it way back in the day when they were so-called Gorilla Corps in the EU scene. So seeing Atletico, a team that we already know is strong, getting what we already also know is a strong drop location as far as consistent loot and vehicle spawns go, means that even though they're not in the circle right now, they should be able to get reasonably kitted and hopefully find a decent way to the zone, but that's kind of the gray area. Because if we look at the map right now, a lot of the areas they go to, especially in the center, are taken. There aren't many places that they can go to that'll be that safe. They're gonna to need to pull something out of their hat to actually find a home here in the mid game. Um, farm. Farm looks pretty open at the moment. I would say the farm or shelter would probably be the safe places. But even then, you got Squad Eight who are currently looting out shelter and prison, so it probably mm -hmm. rules out shelter. But farm's definitely free if they can get past Milter. Well, there's Unnoticed. one guy there for uh, Squad Four. And... Taking place. Squad Five shooting at one of the drivers. We'll see. Yeah, big uh, yikes. So what's up, these two guys? Are... Yeah, there's two guys that are scouting out from Fermor. So two guys uh, driving past that safely. That, that, that is good they are, they're able to get past that. But this does make a question mark. The guys that are left in Fermor for Gen Joker and Juice X saying, all right, how are we going to get past these guys? Where exactly are they? We know they're around there somewhere, but are they still going to be there when we drive past in our own car? Yeah, exactly. And then we've got uh, the other two drivers from Squad 5 Insight there, which is uh, Arcane. They're also chasing that. They're pursuing that other car right now. That's it. It's uh, a bit of, they're a bit late on that one, about a kilometer away at this point. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's a long pursuit. I'm probably not going to turn to anything. Uh, but the, the two players that we saw leaving that car, Woodsy and Co., they do find themselves an empty, or actually they're driving past empty compound. The one they're heading toward, though, with Harold Holt in it, they're going to have to be careful about that. Um, but I yeah. do believe at this point that they Harold should just Holt grab that comment them. and be happy. So Harold Holt can see them, but he's not taking shots. He's, he's playing it safe. He's just saying, I see you, but I'm not going to shoot you yet because I am on my own. He oh, I really like this. Up, but although the rest of his team is coming in with vehicles quite quickly. Archie 24 coming in. And then uh, Sasu Naru and IDK will be catching up. They're about a kilometer and a half off. All right. I really like this from both squads 9 and 11. 11, just, you know, they, they circle around this compound. They realize that no one's serious. All right, grabbing that is quite centered. Harold as well. He was a solo player that scattered that compound out. And the rest of his team should be able to cycle on in as soon as they get looted up. And look at this, squad 5 coming in a bit late. They realize that they're late. And now with shots coming out, they definitely know that they're late. Inside driving uh, over on this buggy. This hill isn't that bad, but it's definitely not as good as the compound that Woodsy and Tony are now in. 
with uh, Happy Vitez taking shots down, just taking out that tire. The tires of that vehicle, trying to tie Squad 11 down in that area. Stop them from getting away quickly. Oh, no yeah. Risks, squad arrives. Should have kept that a bit safer, I feel. Yeah, definitely. They left that right in the middle of town. Although we do note that uh, Woodsy has a, a sniper. It looks like mm. a... Um, kind of oh, M24. Nice. M24, yeah, so he might have gotten a drop for that. No, nah, M24s are actually world spawns now. World spawns, all right. Yeah, you can do. I, I, I believe anyway. I, I think that is that on live right now, actually. Yeah. Oh, well, he didn't get a crate because the only crate that's in right yeah, now is in the, the water. Ocean. I did not see him go there. <laughs> Tony LH comes with a scar there at uh, Happy Virits, trying to get some some uh, shots off, but Happy drops straight behind the hill there into cover. Squad 5 sort of just trying to circle the squad 11 here, although I don't think squad 5 are aware that squad 9 is also just third manning and watching right now. And we have a driver from I Love Spaghetti about to drive in the middle of these three squads. Squad 20, which oh, is... You should not be here. <laughs> he should not be here. I don't think he realizes that he is surrounded. He's got the two guys in the cars. They've just jumped. The three now have just jumped out. I don't know if they've seen him, but they definitely did all jump out at the same time that he came sort of what I would say in their vision. They, they can see him. They've seen his bike. They see him. So I'm watching Naira B right now, taking a, lining up a shot with a silenced M16. Oh yeah, get out of there. Oh! Ho, ho. He's dead. He's dead already. They're even blowing up the bike wheels. Oh man, no, no mercy at all. And Luke Ultra rolling on by to the side. At squad five now. He has seen it, and he's taking a couple of shots straight down at that that squad five. And Squad 11 taking mm. shots at the last member of Squad 5 inside, who's currently driving down the road. A bit long range there, I'd be very surprised seeing any downs coming out. Mostly just posturing, saying, hey, I know you're there, you know I'm there. Don't peek me too hard or I will kill you. But at that range, I think it's four or 500 meters, it's going to be very hard for any real engagement to occur between Squad 12 and Squad 5. Yeah, definitely. We've also got uh, Squad 9 still just sitting there. They're not, they're, they're playing it very safe. Not telling anyone about their presence, they're just sitting there. They haven't shot at anyone yet either, surprisingly. So all those squad oh. have taken shots, and five have taken shots. Uh, squad not, uh, yeah, squad nine have just sat there very quietly, just just playing it safe. Probably gonna try uh, and pass the third man. Squad five, squad C. six, eleven. Yeah, it, these guys are mostly just posturing right now, right? So there's no way any downs are gonna happen. But the only real decisive fight that's going to occur here is when one of these teams decide to leave. So right here with this dip, any down that even happens, they'll be able to crawl right on back down. They're going to be perfectly safe to get a res off, and then they're just pretty much going to be fine as long as they don't uh, play too far away from this little dip. The big thing I'm looking at, though, is all these other teams that are um, trying to get in from the zone. So, And a team that had a lot of trouble with that was Squad 6, um, Jam Gaming. They have now lost, I believe, two players trying to make their way into the zone. And on to the southeast of this whole little trifecta of fights that we're seeing, uh, Luke Ultra has made his way to the peninsula. But if we look at his player list, there's he is the only one left on his squad. There's been three deaths in this game, and they have all been from Jam Gaming. Yeah. Jam getting a very unlucky split there because Luke was uh, on his, like, I didn't see that team. Oh, hang on. We've just got Welzig taking shots. Right now. So, squad 16, squad 8. Uh, looks like 16 aren't going to stop and fight. They're going to keep driving. Uh, oh, yeah. They did take some pretty heavy hits there. With Welzig down below, down below a quarter. Deadeye at three quarters and Rusky at three quarters as well. A players in one shots. vehicle, very risky. Eight still shooting them. All right, looks like they've been able to get away. Zone shrink just about done. This shrink's gonna be pretty important. Millie probably not gonna be in, but it definitely is still possible. I'll give it about a 20% chance for it to end up going south. Center of the, of the map as well, or the center of the zone, quite, quite occupied already. There's only one or two empty compounds that are still not taken yet. A lot of these teams that are on edge would or could grab them, but getting that information that they are in fact empty is gonna be very hard to come across. And with the new zone, they probably shouldn't right now because the center, a little bit further north, and there aren't many good compounds right now that are in the center. I think that's squad 12. The guys in immunity are pretty much in the most centered compounds with this new shrink. Yeah, yeah, so it looks like Nutshot holding that spot there and then the rest of the immunity team came down actually seemed to play well for them. They've now got a, a very strong position to hold from. Just currently watching Squad, squad 3 taking shots at, um, who are they? They're taking shots at Squad 11, I think. No, sorry, Squad 4. They're taking shots at Squad 4, but they've stopped now and they're sort of backing up, back up the hill.
We're actually seeing a lot of teams uh, not moving too, too much right now, uh, especially in the farm area. All these players that decide to find homes, they're uh, not moving out. The only one that did was the guys on Squad 5, the guys on Arcane, leaving uh, their their hill atop, or their spot atop the Jinky Hill, and going instead to Potato Hill in the dead center of the circle. Decent spot as far as positioning goes, but tactically speaking, this is going to be a really hard spot for them to hold if they actually have to defend it. But the idea is, is that there's going to be so many squads around them that they probably also still in dead center so they're feeling pretty good about that spot more teams making their way on the, edge. On the southeast side though zidon getting it down to jack sire and he pulls up with the wrong common yeah. his team will be backing off to the southeast there uh reads in a bit of heavy damage Rezzy, 13. I've seen three or four blood flashes now, but I think he's gonna get away. I'm just go and check out on him, see how he's still taking shots. The question is, is what's this step two? You know, all these comments they're passing aren't into the zone, and there's still Atletico to the northwest on top of that hill. They're definitely gonna be able to see Rekistus, I think that's his name, and they're already taking shots at him. Yeah, Rezzy taking quite a bit of damage and splitting off from the rest of his team. Two of his team members now driving but taking heavy shots. Uh, might have had a little bit too much damage to his car. Maybe the rest of the guys are scouting, but either way, they are currently split. But his teammates, once again, all I see him on the east side of the current zone. They're going to be rolling across a full squad in that little dip squad 15. This is really bad for them. You see, squad 15. Shooting very quickly that chance. Oh, that car is smoking. I'm not sure quite yet. They still have another squad that'll be coming up on it. They gotta stop on this hill right now. They cannot go any further in this smoking UAZ. And as oh. I said, that, one of them gets picked off by the, by the squad 15 behind them. Smokes go out. Very, very Rex is I'm gonna call him Rex. Yeah, it's going Rex. So Rex is throwing out all the smokes he's got there. Four smokes going down to try and give himself some cover to pick up his teammate. As you can Should see from the so. map, we've got Squad 8 just behind them and Squad 15 just ahead of them. Both of those squads have almost clear line of sight to them. They have nowhere to hide right now. Oh yeah, look actually at Squad 8 right now. Rek is actually running down the hill, but the only line of sight blocker between them is foliage in the tree. Going down the hill a little bit further, uh, P. Wong could be able to spot him if he just looks in this direction. But they just aren't oh, yes, quite... Oh, now they do see him though. This is real bad for Squad 13. They've got an SKS on him as well. One bad, what one bad step here from Rek? I think he might be done. Yeah. Answer here. They're definitely not gonna be able to push in and take a two v four. But at the same time, it's not like they have a car anymore. They can't really sneak around this at all. This is really rough. Boom goes the UAZ. There goes the UAZ. The other team's making sure for good measure they don't get back into it. So we've got Rec coming in, and then we've got Doctor Classified running a much more conservative path right through the dip there, so that Squad Eight don't get a chance to see him. Mr. P Wong jumping on a motorbike, I think. Squad Eight are bailing mm -hmm. out. Yep, Squad Eight are, are, are leaving. They've uh, they've had their fun and they're off. That's and we've got really Squad Twenty One and Squad Eighteen exchanging shots between the uh, compound beside School and the compound beside Roshock there. Although it doesn't look too serious, uh, Squad. Uh, 18, I think. Yeah, squad 18 just jumping in the US. They're gonna get out of there. They're gonna head straight to the new zone. Not gonna hang around. No, thank you, they say. And we got. <laughs> Looks like he's going for the tires of their buggies because a couple of them got it. He did actually knock one. He's knocked Sarge, but it doesn't look like the team's gonna come back for him. The team do actually think it's squad of four and they're gonna let. Oh no. We've got Saint 69 trying to pick up Sarge right now. This is honestly the best case for the guys in squad 13 for RLC. They're now taking a fair 2v2. Dr. Classified able to get the read knock onto Sarg. There's just Saints in the back. We still have full HP, but is not going to be able to save his teammate. And look at that wreck on the flank. Knocks his head off with that mini 14. And now look at this. We were saying how they weren't in a great spot, but they were able to take a fair 2v2 as the stars align. And that buggy is still there. They even have a way out now. They're kind of in this game again. They have to move very quickly though. That, that, that's 
looks like Wrecker is just going to yeah, finish him off and then grab that buggy. Very quick loot. I'm assuming they need some meds because they have burnt up quite a bit of meds after the, uh, the, the string of bad luck they've had. Oh god, look at this map right now. This this circle is going is absolutely ridiculous. We've had a lot of shots so far, not too too many down, still 74 up, and they're all going to be crammed into the circle. The south side of the circle is going to be absolutely insane here as all these teams are going to be trying to make their way in on the, all these different sides, south and west. Th those are the two big spots right now I feel to look at. Definitely. We've got Squad 4 and Squad 17 trading shots. 22, 19, and 7 all trading shots as well. Luke Ultra from Squad 6, Jam Gaming, still managing to stay in the match. Oh, nice. He's uh, just taking it very safe, sitting inside buildings. He's not picking fights. Uh, we've got also Squad 13, third member, I Re Re Redzil. He's still just sitting and waiting. Looks like Squad 13 have gotten that buggy. They're going to try and make it back in now into the zone. Or they do have a bit of cash up to play, and they are slowly burning outside that circle. Yeah, and this it, it, sooner or later, the circle is going to reach a critical mass where it's just not going to happen at all. They're just not going to be able to just keep sneaking in their way. And there's going to need to be a, something, something that's got to give. And it's probably going to happen with these vehicle transitions first. Squad 19 trading shots here with uh, Squad 12. And then Squad 22. Squad 20 trying to get shot. 19, 17, and 22 taking shots at them. One of them getting knocked off. they're not dead yet. Getting knocked off his bike. Shackles, he's well below half HP now. He really needs to find somewhere safe to heal up. I can't believe that anyone from Squad 20 was able to get past that. There were literally three different squads that were taking shots at them, and, and two players, three players actually, were able to get by that. They only lost one during that, which is an absolute miracle. And look at this, they're kind of transitioning the right way. They do still have one or two squads in front of them, but the fact they're able to even be alive right now is an absolute miracle. Yeah. Got squad 5 and squad 3 already on the top of the potato hill there together in the new zone and they're, they're trading shots very intermittently. I think they know each other are there, but they're not really pushing each other either. Yeah, there's no real reason to. Any push that happens would cause them to get very, very easily third-partied. There's still 73 up alive, and despite starting with less players than normal matchmaking game, we are now back up to more players alive at this stage than normal matchmaking game. Only seven deaths now in the third circle. The question is, is who's going to be making their move first? I do see a couple of cars moving on the southwest side. Harold Holt on that brown team leading, leading the way up to Potato Hill. But there's already two squads up here, man. goes twitch happy vets getting harold holt out of his squad they're currently watching nutshot they're taking shots from from behind it looks like squad nine is taking the shots although they are they can you can be heard from squad 12 so of course team immunity here very aware holding a very tight formation too not really taking any risk on this team they're, they're just sitting here waiting out the they're currently trading shots against Squad 5, the guys on Arcane. They definitely have a high advantage, but despite that, Big EJ getting a nice headshot onto Testroy. Going to be getting one play down on the far left side. NYRB is going to be popping smoke, going for that res while it's happening. But the guys on Immunity taking this advantage, actually moving up on this left flank. This is the time to be doing that, but if they go too far left, there is Squad 19 that is making the exact same move right now. Exactly. Seven and sixteen trading shots in school, but sixteen has bolted on that. They're trying to get in the zone. Seven also realizing they need to do the same thing and try it up. And twenty-one to manning that spot as well. Oh, you see this fight on the west side? This is a three-way squad fight here. It's squad sixteen, twenty-one, and seven. But inside, oh, yeah, I guess this fight's happening everywhere. <laughs> Testroy, and I did miss that last kill, unfortunately. Um, just. 21 holding that building still the, the building they were the first one on this hill all that time ago and they're still holding the same buildings dug in like little ticks not going to go anywhere not giving in to anyone he's currently watching on the top he's watching down oh, he knows they're there you can see look at him he's, he knows they're there he just he can't get a, a clean oh, there we go. taking shots of dead eye kiwi not even landing anywhere this is a 4v2 they gotta be careful Oh, he took a hit, he just took a hit, so he's gonna get back to the building, yeah, take it safe. He did get the smoke off, though. 
Yeah, if anything, it's curious to be seeing them actually try and take that fight when they only have two players. That means that the guys in Squad 16 aren't going to be sort of pressing this issue. They weren't able to get it down, but this this north side, no squads have actually died yet. They're 60 alive, so there's been a lot of casualties for teams, but no full-on wipes as of now. Squad 16 still pushing up the hill. They're, they're sort of they're sandwiched between 21 and 7. So you can see that they're, all their, both their squads only have two players, so I'm not sure if they're aware of that. Squad 7, one of their players still outside the zone. Zone's closing now. They do need to get in. And all of Squad 22 also need to make that move into the zone. We've got all of Squad 11 outside the zone still, just seeing their buildings. Yeah, that zone's going to be taking them soon. Doesn't hurt too, too much as of now, but still not something you can just scoff at, especially with the reduced loot spawn. That uh, loot, the, the reduced loot they've been able to grab with the horrible plane path they had at the start. I'm looking at the map right now. The string's just about done. The west side looks absolutely just filled to the brim with people. The zone does end up going there, so these guys don't have to move. But it just looks like anywhere you look, there's just a, a huge rainbow of color. Every single bush, every single tree on this hill has a squad. And I think we see our, our first wipe. I think it's going to be squad 22. The guys on Team Morton will be going out first in 20th place. Team Unity taking some heavy fire on the top against Squad 5. So Team Unity are taking it from Arcane right now with uh, one of their players, uh, Unkur. He's currently knocked. Nut shot, just smoking him up and picking up. Striker, as we said, it just gets knocked by Happy Beats from Squad 5. Not looking good for Unity here with two knocked down. Oh yeah, Biggie J, the only hope for Striker, but he has two players, Testroy and Happy Vitez, that are moving in on this left flank. The smokes are out, a lot of AK fire coming out as well. Biggie J now down to 1 HP, there's too many angles for him to watch. All Inside has to do is just peek right down here. But that being said, he isn't down quite yet, and Covering Fire from behind is coming out. Ungpry as well as Nutshot, so they got some Covering Fire for Biggie J, but it doesn't matter. That's going to be happy to get that down, and he's way too far away for the res. That's it, that team is wiped. Twitch, uh, Arcane taking out immunity there for 19th place. Then we've got squad nine, just got wiped as well. Uh, just there were a lot of wipes, there were actually five wipes. Yeah, there were just five In fact, five wipes. about 20 players died during that fight. <laughs> uh, as we say that, Linksy from uh, Atletico like taking out. Uh, as we said, squad eight completely destroying a team. Just squad 14, goodbye. It looks like that this east side is going to be the next hotbed with how the zone's moving. Atletico is already here on this hill, but there's a squad coming up right below them. The guys that are on outside, this is really bad for them. They have no cover. They're down the hill, and Atletico is spotting them out first. This is going to be real rough. But as I say that, and the other squad in the northeast could third party this. As we can see, it's a, the Atletico is here on the bridge, not taking any chances. Squad 6, remember the team that got knocked out really early with the one guy? They're still up. in! He just took out two players from Squad 10, uh, from squad 10 I think. That's good. Luke Ultra, what a hero. As we say that, the, uh, squad 10 to finish McClutch there. To, to avenge his, his teammate's knock with Raven, the, the, the single man standing from Squad 17. Num uh, Nefor from He's going in. He's getting knocked though. Raven, he's coming over the hill. Will Heather be ready for this? Oh! Oh, that was a lot closer than I feel that it should have been. Heffa going for the res on clutch instead of the assistance did cause the down to occur, but he wasn't able to get any kills. Atletico was able to secure that squad wipe, and look at this. That squad of the Northeast Squad 10 is not going to be third party them. They got their own problems coming out as a, a on the east side. Another three-way fight between 10, 8, and 18. Yeah. We also got Wigan and his squad here. It's very safe squad four. They haven't really done much this team game. They've just been sitting back there, playing it safe, staying out of the way everyone. And we've still got that the duo teams up high there. 17, 16, and 21. All still sitting in that same hill up on the northwest there. Yeah, when you're up as a duo, you're going to be moving very, very uh, proactive, or, not, or retroactively rather. They're only moving when you exactly have to. Atletico clears out squad 10, they're shooting them in the back, sending them to ninth place. I think the northeast side, squad 8, the guys on New Gamble finish off by 18, putting them into 10th place. Uh, east side, very, very clear, but as I said, Atletico have a duo coming up on their southwest side, or a trio, but uh, Atletico uh, having the hilltop definitely have a significant tactical advantage. A lot more cover, elevation, and squad probably have one tree. 
Heifer taking very dangerous looks that they can see him, but he can't see them, and they're not. Yeah, they see him. They've seen him oh, twice yeah. now. And then, then Wigan is just sitting, he's just playing it out. They are barely in the zone, and look, there's a lot of foliage in favor of Wigan. At the same time, though, they don't really want to take any shots, but you still do have three people. If you can get an opening knock, then that's a winnable fight. And the longer they wait here, the more they risk Atletico spotting. Look at this Heffa on the far left flank. I think he spotted them. He yeah, uh, he spotted the car. Not, not, yeah, he's spotting their car. Doesn't hasn't actually seen anyone yet. Might do it soon though. Oh, he's getting he's so close. He's on top of them now. His team's not here to back him up. I don't think he's gonna get out. He's not gonna get out of this. Unfortunate for them, but Atletico still do have a positional advantage and squad four, they're forced to push up this hill. The element of stealth is broken. And look, at, I hear some frags rolling down. Uh, Krippik takes a little bit of damage from that, but on the right flank, we have Chuz that is wrapping around very, very far to the east. And Atletico, though, it looks like they're not even willing to take this fight. They're pulling back from this. Yeah, it looks like they're going straight up for those, those the buildings on the hilltop. They're taking position. They know that what the, this new zone is going to be the smallest. It's likely going to cover this house again, so they're just going to hold this house. Yep, they're Meanwhile, going straight they're, they're actually found some new core to the northwest side. They're engaging the guys in squad five that are currently in their own fight. Squad 20, the guys on Grim getting de definitely in the worst of it, getting pinched from the north and the west side. Red already down. His teammate, Lanks, just kind of trapped behind this rock. Tester has a pretty good angle and is putting a lot of fire down. There's just not enough cover to shroud them from all these angles. And they get wiped out. Squad 20 taken out by squad five there, the trio. Oh no, this is still squad four. So they got, got 18 final. kills right now. Look at this group. Yeah, 18 kills for Happy Virits. Squad five. Team Arcane really, really bringing the game to this. The same way, so tactically executed with their, their flanking ability. Mm -hmm. The team just wraps they're, around they're here. Very, they're a very aggressive team. The fact that they're able to go into this end game with as many players as they have, that is the max number four, really allows them to do a lot of strategy that other teams with only duos and trios just aren't allowed to do. The new zone pops as well, and they're not in it, but they do have a lot of trying to work with. Atletico is spotting them out, though. Uh, the Happy Vita's kind of caught out a bit, not quite in the white zone yet. Although he's getting some really good shots on Nifor there, knocking Nifor to half. He yeah, Nifor doesn't really have anyone him. that can help him out at all either. There's no other firing ports. This tree is pretty much all that can engage that particular angle. He's probably going to have to fall back from this. So we've got four squads left. Squad four, 18, three and five. That's SYF Arcane. And Intergalactic Lads and Atletico to round out that top four we've got here with only one squad of four left, which is squad f Arcane, squad five. 18 kills too. Squad Arcane really bringing the game. Yeah. Playing very aggressive from the very start, wrapping every team they see and just destroying them. They are in the edge. Atletico is the only team that actually is in the circle, and everyone's been moving at the exact same time here. The next fight that happens might be between uh, four and five on the far south side. They're moving towards each other, as you said. And if, if Arkane is showing us anything, is that they're really good at these team fights. We can take the first shots here of this engagement. Oh, inside on the left side. Look, he might be going for a flank. Right up. Right up. Cryptic realizes that he's got Insight just below the hill here. Insight coming back, wrapping with, with Happy Virus. And we've got Testero 10RG pushing really aggressively on the Straight up. Oh my god, that was not close. Oh, but that's because they got shot in the back. Laugh was able to get one of those kills. Squad 18 from their back. And now the, uh, the guys on Arcane definitely heard that are pressing into this. A. Bruce does not realize that his left flank is exposed right now. As we can see, 18. <laughs> That laugh getting ripped up by Testro 10 RG with grenaded and shot by all four, all three of those guys now. With Happy Virts going for the usual where he wraps again. Uh oh. Bruce running, Good running, stuff, running, right. trying to get into the zone. Oh, Atletico spot him out down now, though. A couple of shots coming up from Linksy as well as Nefor. But look at this. This is nice, great ridge. Is, they're using this to great effect, just wrapping around this compound. Blanking as they've always been doing. Lindsay caught out in the open, but no shots except for one landing on him. Atletico falling back from this building, getting on their own side of the ridge with Lynxie in the building. Sunday's now coming out as well. They're trying to use whatever resources they have, but I'm not sure this is going to be enough. Good frag! 
Or even as they say that though, Atletico with two great knocks and kills as well. A push gone wrong. And now they know it. Like, what they gotta do. Vita is almost going down from the DP of Lincoln. They're trying to push and fish him off as well. It is just Testeroy and he goes down. Atletico holding the center compound, taking game one of the PGI qualities. Look at this. Look how many kills they had. I think that was, yes, 14 kills for them. But for squad number two for Arcane, eight kills on Vitez, six for Testroy, four for Insight, and three for Nair. I think that's 21 yeah, kills. 21 kills for that squad, too. Very aggressive place in that squad all game. Yeah, aggressive is definitely the word for that. They were just wrapping around that entire circle, just taking names left and right, being super aggressive, never staying in one spot. But it really goes to show for Atletico the merits of just sitting in one spot, sort of calming down, saying, all right, no one's going to push us. They're going to be wrapping around because they kind of have to. So because we positioned ourselves well, we're allowed to just sit here and let other teams like Arcane take those fights. And then in the late game, we can win the fight that matters even if we do have a one-player uh, disadvantage. Yeah, Atletico are really playing the tactical game there. Not picking fights when they when they felt they were out of position or when they felt they didn't need to. Although by no means were they uh, playing cowardly. They got 14 kills in that game. I think the average number of kills for a winning team is uh, 12. So definitely getting more kills than the average. No, they They're still definitely, good. towards the mid-game there, they took out a couple of squads on their way through. Right. So we're just going to jump out of the lobby so we'll just take you back there okay. alrighty so game two will be coming up to you guys very shortly we will just take a quick intermission while we get that all set up and we'll be back with you with game two from the PGI global qualifier I am Hyperion with uh, Seal here and we'll be back very soon mm -hmm.